Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today, we're going to be doing some of my favorite types of episodes. This one will be a hero episode, understanding our heroes. And today, we're, we have with us a guest, Mr. Chase Belke from Siemens. And Chase has helped us with several topics around VFDs and soft stars. And, and we just kind of want to get to know a little bit more about Chase today. Uh, as we sit down with him and for our listeners to get to know him a little better. So, Chase, to get, maybe to get us started, can you just tell us a little bit about your journey to the role that you're in now? Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> my name's Chase. I've been doing this for, let me see here. I'm getting older now. I've been doing this for 18 years. I decided to go to college and get an engineering degree uh, strictly because that's what my friends were doing. So that's not exactly the best career choice that way, I guess, but it, it, it turned out for the best, I suppose. I picked electrical engineering just because that's what my friends did. Um, <laughs> but it turns out I also picked, luckily, a career that I really, really enjoy doing. I love all the work that I do. I ended up doing technical support over the phone for a distributor for a number of years. And then I was an industrial control specialist. I was a VFD specialist. I did a brief stint in sales. I, I found that I just like going and pitching drives and motion control so much. So I ended up changing companies and I went to work for Siemens and I've been a drive specialist with Siemens ever since. And I just, I just one of those people that love my job. <laughs> that is awesome. Now, where'd you go to school? I went to school at a, at a small university in Michigan called, uh, used to be called General Motors Institute, but now it's called Kettering University. It's a great place to go. Um, they have what we call a co-op program where you go to school for three months and you go to work for three months and then you just go back and forth. So by the time you graduate, the company that you co-opt with usually wants to hire you because you've got plenty of experience with their specific company and you've been doing on the job training for a long amount of time with them. And that's exactly what happened with me. Okay. I was going to ask you, so is that was, is that your story that did you, so you co-opt with a distributor while you were there? I did. I did. It was a, it was a good distributor. And I worked for them for uh, like 14, 15 years. And then I went to work for Siemens. Wow, that's great. And I, I, I did a very similar path with it at Old Dominion co-oping with Eco. So I, I haven't heard of anybody else doing a co-op with a distributor oh, like awesome. that. So, yeah, man, that's very cool. I love the co-op program. I think, I think it's a great program. I walked out of college and I actually knew how to do a lot of my job. And they didn't have to pay a lot of money to train me. It was, I think it was a great relationship for everybody. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I completely, uh, completely agree. It was, it was the best opportunity for me, and, and at that point in my life, and I mean, it's just opened up so many things. So, you know, you're you're out there. You have a ton of knowledge, a ton of experience working in this industry. You know, that that, that we're serving here. What do you see as some of the greatest challenges that you know industry is facing over the next you know five years or so? Well, I I see. Um... I see probably an influx of industry coming back to the United States pretty soon here. And in light of all the things that have been recently happening, I think we need to bring a lot more manufacturing back to the U S obviously I'm up for that challenge <laughs> working for Siemens. The more manufacturing I see over here, the happier I am. But yeah, I, I, I would like to see more manufacturing over here. Absolutely. And yeah, we, we definitely couldn't agree more. I mean, there's been some great things, you know, we service the Southeast and, in, in South Carolina in particular, there's been some great momentum with uh, some new manufacturing plants that are coming up. It's really, really cool to see. And, and Eco is always great to work with. I really commend you guys. You're always fun to work with. But yeah, the, the, the greatest thing I, I love to do is walk into a new application that's really difficult. <laughs> and uh, it, it gives a challenge, right? There's nothing wrong with a standard boring application. It sells drives. It makes money. And that's all well and good. That's kind of what we're after here when we're working. But Man, there's there's just something fun about working on something that's really difficult, and I, I really enjoy that. Well, that kind of leads me into a question. So, when do you get the most fulfillment in your work, Chase? 
<laughs> not when I'm doing paperwork. <laughs> oh, come on. You don't like um, expense reports, man? I thought no, everybody loved no, that. No, I don't. No, not a bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think the favorite part of my job is going out and um, – I, this is really this is really silly, but I I just love helping people. I like fixing stuff and making it work. Um, somebody brings me a problem, they say, "Oh, I don't we don't know how to do this." Man, that's just that's just what lights up my day is going out and fixing something and making it work. You know, you drive home with a big old smile on your face, knowing that you accomplished something. It's a box you could physically check, right? There's no there's no ifs ands or buts. You made a machine work today, or you size something that somebody eventually put in and it works, you know, right. <laughs> like, Hey, this customer spent a hundred thousand dollars with you. And Oh, by the way, it actually worked. You know, it's, it's a good feeling. It, it's great. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I don't think there's anything silly about that. I mean, that there's a, that's a common theme amongst, you know, that I talk with a lot of our guys on a regular basis, just that, that joy that you get just from helping someone. Right. And, I think you just kind of have to have that little bit of DNA to be in roles like yourself uh, to, to really enjoy it, you know, so that's, that's great. Yeah. So, fun. so let, let's talk about, you know, uh, somebody that would want to get into a career like yours and, you know, if you were to give them some advice, what would that advice be if they wanted to kind of pursue a, a similar path that, that you've taken here? Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is this is where I'm no hero. Like I just told you, I picked my career surely because that's what my friends did. <laughs> but um, if if you wanted to do the same thing, I would say that you know a place that gives good on the job training is very helpful. I'd say that the engineering degree is helpful. I don't think that it's required. There's a lot of universities out there that offer mechatronics programs that are absolutely fantastic. There's still um, a lot of programs out there that you can go to without getting some four year degree. I don't think it needs to be that. I think if you love what you do, you can build experience and and go from there. As long as people trust you to do the work, I think the rest of it just kind of falls into place. The most important thing is if you want to do what I'm doing, I guess you just have to have a love for it. And, and if you love what you do, it just kind of falls into place from there. So yes, schooling is important and education is important. And don't get me wrong, I've spent plenty of nights staring at a computer screen, you know, <laughs> wondering why I couldn't figure something out. So there's, there's definitely a lot of frustration there, but yeah, just persistence and wanting to do the job and, you know, getting into either a mechatronics program, a mechanical or an electrical program, I think is the best way to go. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm sure, you know, you've, you probably have several of these and, and I kind of like to dig uh, into this topic a little bit, but mentors, you know, when you think back over your career, I'm sure there are some people that have, have been influential, you know, in your development and growth as, as you've gone from that engineering student in, in Michigan to, you know, a, a, the drive solution manager for Siemens. There's a lot of steps and a lot of people along the way. Anybody that stands out, I mean, this is an opportunity to give some shout outs to, to those uh, types of people that can help you to uh, get here. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> you know what? I, I had, um, my father is, is very good. <laughs> I would say my father's always been my real hero at things. One of the things he's always taught me is, are you going to do a 70% job or are you going to do a hundred percent? And sometimes 70% job is getting out there, making the motor spin and, and calling it a day and, and getting the heck out of Dodge and letting them deal with the other stuff. The hundred percent job is making sure that they're comfortable with the way it works and, you know, that doesn't always happen. You can't always do that. But when you can do that, you darn well better do 100% because I think people remember that. That's that's the most important thing. And then um, I went into an interview for this job when I went to work for Siemens. And the guy that <laughs> ended up being my boss's boss now, but uh, <laughs> he told me that he hired me. And I, and I remember sitting in the interview and I said that, uh, you know, I knew this and this and this, but I wasn't really experienced with this, you know, with, with X and, um, he hired me and I asked him, I don't know, like maybe a month or something after he hired me, I said, well, why did you hire me? I know that there's a lot of people that are probably more qualified than me. And he said, I could tell that you loved what you do. And he told me to always remember to just keep loving what I do. And so, you know. I, I really appreciated that. So that guy was Ian Hall. And so he's, he's now um, over our general motion control. And I, I, I respect the heck out of him. He's a guy that's actually 
not only a boss, but he's actually done the job that I've done before. And so it's great to have that because not saying that every manager is not good. There's plenty of great managers out there, but this particular guy has done my job and I can call him and say, look, this is what's going on. What do you think I should do? And he responds in kind, you know? So right. I'd say those are two of my best ones. Well, that's two great ones, man. I mean, a shout out to your dad. Uh, that doesn't get any better. I'm sure he'll be listening to this podcast. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. So let's talk about a highlight of your career. Do you have a story or something that, that, really stands out as man that was freaking cool and i did it anything like that uh i would say probably the first really large multi-axis system i put together i was absolutely terrified <laughs> <laughs> um so i was a basic vfd specialist in one role right and i had done general drives right fans pumps compressors you know simple simple startups and then somebody came to me and they said, you know, we want you to size, I think it was five axes or something like that. And it was five axes of servos. And I was new in my job and uh, <laughs> I was newer to the software. I was new to everything. And it, it took me forever to do it. I went back and forth. I second guessed myself 8,000 times. And I finally said, okay, th this is right. I think this is right. And they went back and they said, they said they increased production numbers by some crazy percentage or something. And, they said it was a, they said it was a really good set of parts and they got it working great. And, um, they said they were thankful that I had sized it. And I, I just thought that was so cool because that was the first really big coordinated system that I had done. And I was absolutely terrified until the moment they actually called me and said, Hey, everything's working great. Until that moment, I, I, I couldn't even sleep. <laughs> right. And that's not a, I kept waking up. I was like, gosh, I wonder if I did this right. You know, and I would go back, I would actually open my laptop and go back and look at things and be like, no, I did that. I did that. So yeah, that's one of them. That is, that is awesome, man. I mean, so it sounds like, you know, that project brought you a lot of fulfillment and joy and, and excitement. I mean, are those types of projects typical? I mean, for, for what you enjoy the most, I mean, are they the ones that this coordinated type system that you get excited about for the future? Yeah. I, I like the more difficult ones. Don't get me wrong. All the other ones make money too. And that's, that's fine and well and good, but sizing a 100 horsepower pump or, you know, helping a customer figure out how to size something like that, or that that's fine. I also like, I love doing um, seminars where I can teach people how things work or show people how a drive works or why they want to pick a drive. And, and that's why I love doing these things with you guys. They're, they're a lot of fun because I enjoy, I enjoy that. Absolutely. So put your, uh, this, this is a fun question to kind of walk down. You got the engineering hat on. You are an engineer. People have lots of different perceptions when it comes to engineers, right? Whether it's a pocket protector or whatever it may be. So <laughs> if you had a common myth that you could debunk right here, man, you could throw this thing out of the window, what would it be when it comes to uh, to your profession, a common myth that you could debunk? I would say uh, <laughs> a lot of people say engineers are terrible conversationalists. Um, <laughs> and I, and I may be a terrible conversationalist. I don't know that, 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 I don't know. I guess some people could argue that, but, uh, challenge we, anybody we are, that said that you're a terrible conversationalist. I would challenge him <laughs> head on. <laughs> we, we are, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with, with introverted engineers. Um, I just happen to not be one. I, I think that, uh, that's just always been my, my style of, I want to talk to people. I want to go out and see things and, and chat and have a good laugh about things. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's, there's a lot of work to be done. And at that point, that's when I need to uh, isolate myself, dim the light so I can focus on what I'm doing. But sure. yeah, I, I think that, you know, we're people you can talk to. <laughs> Absolutely, man. <laughs> so I, I, that's what I'd say. One thing. I would agree hundred percent. You know, at eco, we have, you know, a, a bunch of engineers on staff and that's the biggest thing is, you know, a lot of our engineers, we just we, we we understand technology, but we actually get more fulfillment and joy in our lives out of just helping people, uh, and 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 connecting the dots, and always being on the move too. Uh, you know, one thing that always kind of, I guess, turned me away a little bit is I couldn't imagine me working in the same place all the time. You know, so I like the flexibility, you know, just oh, to yeah. see all the different. I mean, there's so much cool industry. In the United States, I mean, just the southeast United States, the different types of plants from from steel to chemical to petro to, to food to, to, you know, pulp and paper. It's just so many different things that you, we get to see 
and I, I I don't take it for granted. I'm sure you don't either. No, that's a, that's a great part of the job. I I always get to see new things. I get to meet new people. You know, my territory is the Carolinas and Virginia. So I, I love traveling a couple of days a week. I mean, I have kids, so I like to keep the travel down, but you know, I love traveling a couple of days a week, seeing new things, meeting new people. It's, it's a big thing for me. Some people like to work at, you know, hit a desk and be in one spot every day. And I'll admit sometimes that's me too, but you know what, man, I, I just love getting on the road sometimes and going to see something new and driving somewhere I haven't been before. Absolutely. Well, let's, let's learn just a little bit about you outside of your, your role. What hobbies do you have? Or you mentioned you have some kids. I mean, it sounds like you're a busy guy outside of work as well. Yeah. So, um, I have two kids, three and six. They are the most important things in my life. They're fantastic. Doesn't matter what kind of day you had. When when you get home, they'll put a smile on your face. And there's nothing I've done better with my life than that. Not not a thing. Aside from that, hobbies. I I flirt with running here and there. <laughs> right. I I used to run. I used to I used to could. I did a half marathon once, and uh, everybody was saying at the end of it, you know, when are you going to run your first full marathon? I was like, never, never. <laughs> right. Because all I could think of was everything hurts right now. Everything hurts. Right. I mean, I'm I'm six foot, 195 pounds. When I run for a long time, it hurts. I enjoy cycling. I don't get to do it near as much as I want to, but I, if you put me on a bicycle and point me in a direction, I'll just go. I've been scuba diving a few times. I love that. I went skydiving. Uh, twice in a tandem. That was, that was awesome. I play a little bit of computer games here and there. I love technology. Obviously I'm that kind of guy that has three oscilloscopes in his basement. That's not a joke. Right. <laughs> um, that's real. But yeah, I just, I just, I don't know. I joke and I say, sometimes I say nature's stupid, <laughs> right. but at the same time, you'll probably be the first person to find me out in nature running or, or doing something. So yeah, I just love staying active. Well, that's great, man. It sounds like you got your priorities right, and you got a lot going on at home, a lot of good things going on. That that that's that's wonderful. You know, it really makes it important when you have a really good why to come home. You know, and you have a good reason why to work. That's uh, that makes the days a little bit a little bit better. So that's sure great. Does. I mean, and let's let, let's kind of camp on that why for a second. Eco asks why. We always love to understand people. And, and their ideas, but but people for this episode in particular, why do you enjoy the career path that you're on? Man, I, I love electronics. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter what kind of electronics they are. I love them. It doesn't matter if it's a new cell phone, new computer. The, the motorized scooters that they started releasing in Charlotte and Raleigh that some people love and some people hate. I mean, just, just from a technical standpoint, I love motorized scooters. I think they're cool. Um, <laughs> Maybe, yeah. maybe they shouldn't be everywhere, but I, I do love them anyway. They, just anything electronics, I love. That that just gets me going. I, I love talking about that all day long. That's great, man. That's great. I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up here with, with just one parting question. You know, if you were to, to step into my shoes as the host here, Chase, what would you have asked yourself that I didn't today? I don't know. I think you did a pretty good job covering <laughs> everything. Um there, there's really not much to me besides that, I guess. Uh, yeah, no, that's really about it. I guess the, the only other thing is uh, I did I did recently mix work and play one time. I actually took one of our motors, I took a 3D CAD file, and I put it into um, my VR headset. Why? I have no idea. But for some reason, I decided that in my little virtual reality living room, I wanted to have one of our 1PH8 motors sitting on my coffee table. It took me about two hours to figure out how I did it. And I couldn't have been happier with myself. So if that doesn't tell you I'm a nerdy guy, I don't know what is. Oh, that is great. That is great. Well, Chase, this is this has been wonderful, man. I think you you really opened up the the, the doors a little bit to let our listeners learn a, a little bit more about you. You're a fun guy. You're, you're uh, just a great partner for Electrical Equipment Company, and and just thank you again for taking the time with us. And you definitely, I, I don't care what you say, you are a hero. And you're one of our heroes, and uh, I really appreciate your time today. Well, I, I appreciate it. I don't, I don't think I'm a hero. I just love my job, so we'll, we'll, we'll call it that. But well, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You have a great day. You too. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why.
This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. ECO is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.